So guys, welcome back to Niger Anchor News Sports Review. Um, Santiago Jose, I'm going to be your host as usual. So, a lot of things happen during the week. You know, normally at the end of the season, we have a lot of dramatic encounters and all that happening. So today, we're going to talk a lot and this discussion is going to be huge. So first of all, let's talk about the match between Manchester City and Tottenham Hotspur because that is the match. Uh, that is the latest match that happened during the week. So, in this match, Manchester City were leading and uh, Tottenham had a chance on goal. Like this guy, Son would have scored that goal to make it 1-1. And the time was around 80-something minutes. So, Son missed that chance. And then after the match, there have been speculation. People are saying that this match was actually fixed. And one of the top comments about this match is the one from the Tottenham Hotspur coach where he said there are forces outside the club and there are forces within the club that determined the outcome of that result. I don't know how true that is, but this is a speculative uh, statement and tells that maybe there was a match fixing. But guys, come to think of it let's just take a moment to look at this why did this song score that goal it's it's questionable because a player of son's caliber we expect that son would have scored that goal but he, he just kicked the ball into the goalkeeper and he had just two options it was just to beat the goalkeeper just deviate away from the goalkeeper he's going to either clutch your feet or the defender behind is going to pull you down either ways there's going to be a penalty and it's still to your advantage but this guy chose to hit the ball to the goalkeeper the second option he would have just 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 tip the ball over the keeper because already the goalkeeper was down i don't know what is wrong with son so people are saying okay there's match fixing there's this and that we don't know how true that is but let's see how it goes and then a few minutes later, Manchester City got a penalty in the 90th minute, which Erling Haaland converted. As it stands now, Manchester City really have an upper hand. They've taken this league to the last day of the match, which is this upcoming week. So if they win, they take the league. So far, they are topping Arsenal with two points. But if West Ham can defeat Manchester City, I think uh, it will be an Arsenal do their own assignment. It's going to be arsenal's league what we've been waiting for for a long time so guys um uh, so another talking point is during the week also manchester united were trashed at home by arsenal one goal by arsenal so but that is not even the highlight of that match the highlight is the flooding the rain that poured throughout the old trafford some people just called it decided to call it uh old trafford waterfalls i think that is a very very big one so uh this is the like talking point now if you remember cristiano ronaldo the season before he left manchester united he made this interview and in the interview he was like um the club is not making it's not making fixing everywhere is deteriorated and the things facility need to be put in place the management was upset and then they sacked cristiano ronaldo and that was when he left for uh, Saudi Arabia. So I think what Cristiano Ronaldo actually said is true because with these leakages, we don't expect like a big club like Manchester United should have this kind of issue. So I believe Manchester United's management are going to fix that thing up and then everywhere will be good. Okay, so let's look at the league. Oh, we know that some leagues have already rounded up. Some just have a few match and uh, some have one match or so. So let's take the people who have won the league so far and then we'll conclude from Europe. We'll take a break to the Nigerian league before we come back to Europe. And then we are going to start with the giant of the world, which for me is La Liga. But I think La Liga is the best league in the world. So the La Liga champions, we have the league. Real Madrid have clinched the league, beating barcelona and girona to win it then the cup winner is atletico bibao and the syria R we have inter milan play the salian cup is yet to be played so we don't know who wins and then france we have paris saint germain um bundesliga we have Bayer leverkusen we have in portugal portuguese league we have sporting cp and then holland we have psv and then Feyenoord have won the cup and then in belgium they are yet to conclude their league, so for now there is no uh, champion. And then the cup is Union Saint Golis. And then we have uh, when you go to this Mexican league, uh, Mexico, we have FC SC America. They have not played their league cup, so we can say that for now. So we go to Saudi Arabia. We have Al Hilal beating Al Nassr to win the league. They have not played their final, their cup finals. And incidentally, the cup final is still between Al Hilal and Al Nassr. 
So we have on um, Denmark, they've not rounded up their league, but we have the cup winner is Selbok IF. And then when you go to Australia, Austria, we have their league is still on, so we don't have a win, but their cup is SK Stone Garras. Then we have Ukraine, Shakhtar Donetsk have won the league. They've rounded up the league. And then when we go to Sweden, they've not played their Sweden. They have not rounded up their league, but the Sweden Cup is Malmo FF. So let's take a look down to Poland. The Poland league is still on. They've not concluded, but the cup we have Wisla Krakow. So these are just some highlights of the leagues and their champions so far that we decide to bring you away. And um, quickly, let's take a look. Let's take a walk back to Nigeria where we talk about news coming from Nigeria and the Premier League. The big news during the week was the confirmation of Finidi George as the Nigerian head coach. You know, after the African Cup in Cote d'Ivoire, Earlier this year, Nigerian's uh, head coach, then Jose Pesiero, retired or he resigned uh, after he was given a new contract. So from then, Nigeria had not had a standby or steady coach. But this week, Monday, they confirmed the appointment of Finidi George, a former player and a former attacker for the Nigerian side. And he was also the assistant coach to Jose Pesiero during that african cup of nations so he was confirmed the head coach on monday morning but then his confirmation comes with a lot of confusing and strange clauses inside such as his or his assistant they are not going to be on salary they are going to be paid bonuses um we know the situation with nigeria and bonuses when they say bonuses people hardly get those bonuses like uh, in the past, we've had players come out to complain that, okay, their bonuses were not paid, all those kind of stuff. So I don't know how this is going to be. Maybe they're going to be a change or we don't really understand. Then another clause, they said NFF have um, mandated Finity Joe that all his selection, there should be a lot of home-based players. That is players playing from the Nigerian Football League inside so that they should dominate. You know, in the past, Nigeria is one of the African countries who have the highest number of foreigners in their national team. But that is, by foreigners, I mean people playing outside League, England, Spain, all those other leagues. Um, they are the African country with the highest. So the NFF is like, okay, you guys have to cut down and finish judge. Let your selection be consisting of uh, let's your selection consists of a lot of home base players this move is done in a way that it also promotes the home league without speaking more let's go to the nigerian league so uh during the weeks there were no matches nigerian leagues is on break so uh, the matches still stand as they were. The table leader still Enugu Rangers played 32 matches with 57 points. Remo Stars uh, 32 matches with 56 points. Ejimba 32 matches 53 points. Shooting Stars and Lobbies have shared the same amount of points, 52 points from 32 matches. But goal difference put the Shooting Stars ahead of Lobby Stars. So the league is still like that. The goal scoring chart still remains. So nothing's changed. But the big news that we have so far is the fact that NFS says they are coming back strong. You know, there have been speculation of deals not being paid, bonuses not being paid to players. So NFS had to put the league on suspension, but they are strategizing, they are making ways that by the time they come back, uh, matches, more matches are going to be broadcasted on start time, which will give Nigerian fans the opportunity or the chance to watch their favorite clubs play on TV, live TV, just like the way we watch South African leagues, we watch European leagues and all that. So that's just what we have from the Nigerian league. So let's quickly go back to Europe and other parts of the world to try and round up. So the big news coming in from Europe is the Champions League final, which is scheduled to take place on 1st of June 2024 at Wembley. And this match is between German team Borussia Dortmund and the Spanish champions for 2024 Real Madrid. So it's good to know that Real Madrid have played this uh, competition 17 times. That is the finals of the Champions League. They've participated in 17 times, winning 14, and this will be their 18th time. Um, Borussia Dortmund have only played in three previous Champions League finals, losing two and then winning one. So this is going to be their fourth. And their last Champions League came, uh, the last Champions League final came like 10 years or 11 years back at the same Wembley. So it's like, they play last at Wembley. They lost that match to um, Bayern Munich from the St. Germans League. But this season is going to be against Real Madrid. I don't know if uh, Borussia Dortmund are going to put this a string, but 
they are considered the underdogs anyway, so I don't know what they are going to do, what they have done, their sleeves, maybe they are going to shock the world again. Because throughout the competition, they've been the underdogs, especially against PSG, who are regarded as European heavyweights. They beat them home and away, 1-1 one, one goal. Now, let's move to the Europa League finals. So, we have uh, Bayer Leverkusen is going to play against Atlanta. Atlanta is from Italy, Bayer Leverkusen is from Germany. So, the thing here is, this is the first time Atlanta is ever going to play any European final or cup or whatever it is. This is the first time. But this year again, they've qualified for the Italian Cup final. So it's like it's two for them. Then Bayer Leverkusen have actually played before in 2002. Oh, this is going to be like their second time. And this season also they qualify for the DFB Poker final. That is the German Cup final. And then this year again, they are still unbeaten in the league. They've already clinched the league, as I said earlier. So this season they are on a high. So they could win three trophies if they play their card well and still go unbeaten. So, guys, let's take the last news before we close up. Is the 2020 Ballon d'Or. You know, the 2020 Ballon d'Or was cancelled due to the COVID-19. But then there was a single contender who everybody expected that he was going to win that Ballon d'Or, which is uh, Robert Lewandowski. So, Lewandowski was like the leading person. Everybody knew he was going to win. But unfortunately, that season... The Ballon d'Or was cancelled and the next season, Lionel Messi won it. That was 2021. So the organizers of this award are saying they are going to award that Ballon d'Or to Lewandowski. The question is, I don't know if they are going to award it to every other person that was supposed to win something at the gala that year. I don't know, but we are going to see. Keep watching. So that brings us to the end of this show, Sport Review on Nigerian Connews. Join us next week, Wednesday, for more interesting updates. Once again, I remain your host, Santiago Jose.